Hello, welcome to Men's Health Connected. I'm Glenn Poole of the Australian Men's Health Forum. Hey, it's Men's Health Week, day four, and all week we've been running a series of lunchtime webinars on healthy habits. We've been talking about uh, alcohol, uh, sleep, uh, social connection. Uh, tomorrow we're talking about diet and nutrition, and today we're talking about exercise. So I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands where we all meet from, from around Australia today. Uh, today, uh, for 24 hours, I am coming to you from the Wurundjeri, uh, lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, uh, and I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. So today's talk is about exercise and men's health. It's one of our Know Your Man Facts talks, which uh, uh, if you don't know, they're freely available for you to download uh, from our website. I'm sure one of the team will uh, post a link there. Um, and this talk is called 10 Facts Everyone Should Know About Exercise and uh, Men's Health. Um, there's a little bit of interaction along the way. I've got a couple of quizzes for you in there. So, so stand by your chat box to throw in some answers to uh, some of the questions we ask if you want to. Um, but otherwise, just uh, just sit back and uh, enjoy the uh, enjoy the facts as they unfold. If you want to um, march up and down on the spot, do some star jumps uh, while you're watching this particular webinar, it would be very appropriate to do so. Uh, I'm being very incongruent because having sat down all day in a meeting, I'm now sitting down to deliver this talk to you about how we should exercise more. So um, so I'm not um, practicing what I preach, but I will uh, make sure I go for a quick run around the block afterwards. Anyway, let's crack on. 10 facts everyone should know about exercise and men's health. Now, look, let's be really clear from the start. Those of you who know me will know I'm not a medical practitioner. I'm not even like a phys physical exercise uh, professional. Uh, I'm just a bloke who's passionate about men's health. Um, so let's be clear. We all know that exercise, broadly speaking, is good for us. But if you get really inspired by today and you're not norm normally doing exercise or you've got any health issues, please do um, check with a, uh, a medical practitioner first about the right type of exercise for you so yes we want people to get out there and move more but also we want you to do it in a way that's healthy and and, and appropriate so remember i'm not a doctor i'm just a bloke talking to you about some facts and figures about exercise and mental health as with all our um know your man facts talks uh, this is divided into four sections we're going to look at some key facts uh we're going to then talk about the impact of exercise on your health. We'll give you an opportunity to reflect on what action you could take to get moving a bit more. And we'll finish off with a bit of a chat about how we as men can help others in our lives to um, be active and stay fit. So first, some of the key facts about exercise and men's health. I'm going to start with a quick quiz. Who wants a guess? Right, what, which of these things are killing more Aussie men on a daily basis uh, than any others? Is it uh, is it suicide? Uh, just pop an um, pop, pop pop an answer in the uh, in the chat box if you uh, if you want to have a guess. Is it uh, is it skin cancer? Is it physical inactivity? Road accidents. Michael says yes, certainly. Um, road accidents is a big killer of men. Three and four people who die of road accidents are men. Christine's been a bit smart there and going for physical inactivity as that's today's that's today's um, topic. A couple of people are saying suicide. Uh, is it testicular cancer drugs? Is it prostate cancer? Uh, is it diabetes? Um, physical activity leading to uh, yeah cardiovascular issues. Yeah, good answer, Liam. Right, are you ready? Drum roll. You'll probably not be surprised to know because of the topic of the talk, but you might not have seen the statistic before. It's not that well known. Physical activity is responsible for the deaths of 10 men a day, according to government data. And that's slightly more men than get killed by prostate cancer. And certainly more men than are killed by suicide, drugs, skin cancer, road accidents, and testicular cancer. So being physically inactive really is a serious health issue. It kills 10 men every day. And then for many more of us, it negatively impacts our health and well-being if we don't stay uh, physically active and fit. Now, comparing men's health to women's health, here's another quick quiz for you. Uh, 
we all kind of know what the bad healthy habits are. Um, but which of these do you think that men do more than women? Do we smoke more on average? Do we drink more th than women on average? Um, again, have a guess in the chat box, please. Uh, do we uh, are we more prone to unhealthy eating? Uh, are we more likely to uh, do one virtuous habit? There are we more likely to uh, to exercise than women? Uh, all of them drinking, Mike. Uh, yeah, uh, risky drinking. Someone else certainly. The top three says Anthony. Uh, unhealthy heating, yes. Well, uh, um, David says all as well. So those of you who said all, you are correct. So this is kind of the good news, right? Is that on average, and of course this is not all men and not all women, but on average men have a tendency to drink more on average, uh, be more likely to eat unhealthily, uh, be more likely to smoke. But one of the areas of 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 um, of our health behaviors where men are doing a better job than women on average is that more men than women actually meet the government's guidelines on how physically active we should be each week. But of course, with every piece of good news, it has to be balanced with some bad news. Who can guess what the bad news is? It's a rhetorical question. The bad news is that most of us aren't acting enough to stay healthy. Quick quiz, have a guess. Chuck a number in the uh, in in the in in the chat box. Uh, out of ten, how many men do you think actually meet the physical guidelines every uh, every every week? The, the government's guidelines for being physically active. How many men? Is it one in ten? Two in ten? Is it nine in ten of us? Most of us? Is it half of us? Five in ten? Yeah, we're going for three, three, two in three, 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 two. Yeah, you're reading this infographic. Oh, seven says Richard. Very, very, um, um, very, very, very confident. Yeah, you're. Uh, I think you, you're actually the clues in the infographic. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, um, oops, going the wrong way. It's three in ten. So three in ten of us uh, are are active enough. Sorry, the answer is seven in ten. Seven in ten aren't active enough. So that's quite a substantial proportion. Um, that's it for facts, the general facts. Let's get into the specifics in terms of uh, of our health. So we've covered the fact that while well, exercise is uh, one of those health behaviors that men are more likely to do than, uh, than, than women, most of us aren't active enough to stay healthy. So why does that why does that matter? Another quick quiz for you. Now, which of these health behaviors and health um, health issues is more likely to kill us? Is it being a smoker? Is it being overweight or obese? Is it having high blood pressure? Again, check your answers in the chat box if you want to. Is it high cholesterol? Is it diabetes? Is it low levels of fitness? Okay, some guesses coming through in the chat box. Yeah, Anthony's gone for low fitness. I think you're all getting the sort of smoking. Yeah, I mean, smoking's yeah pretty damn bad for our health, we know. Um, yeah, as is being overweight, as is high blood pressure. Uh, Richard, Tony, thanks, Mike. Thanks for the guests. Uh, low fitness. Uh, Colin says smoking. Yeah. So, yeah, look, they're all they all have a negative impact on our health. But um, as this diagram shows, uh, research has found that low fitness, so that's having poor heart health and poor lung health because of low levels of fitness, is more likely to kill us than those other things. Uh, which is quite quite amazing. Considering when we know just how bad, for example, smoking is for our health, but the act of uh, being unfit is, uh, is is sending many of us to an early grave. So, yeah, being unfit then can be as bad for your health as uh, as, as smoking. Um, ideally, you want to be fit and not smoke, of course. Uh, Broadly speaking, we know that being active keeps your body and mind healthy. And look, I think we know we know this instinctively, right? I mean, most of us have probably had experiences of where we've 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 gone for a walk, we've done a run, we've had a swim, uh, we've moved our body, we've done some yoga, we've been for a dance, we've we, we've moved our body in some way, and we felt better afterwards. So we instinctively know that exercising and moving about um, uh, enables us to to feel to feel better. But let's get into some of the specifics, the actual science. It's not just in our heads. 
the actual science shows us that being active has a positive impact on all these different aspects of our health, our, 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 our heart health, our lung health. It keeps our bones strong. Obviously, it helps us manage our weight. And when you get right down into the mechanics of our body, um, it keeps blood sugar levels low. It uh, reduces cholesterol. It keeps our blood pressure low. So it is for, for, for good reason that some people refer to sport as the best medicine, uh, uh, exercise as the best medicine. Uh, exercise really is uh, a really good medicine that keeps our, our all aspects of our health um, working well. Not just to keep us uh, healthy, it also protects us against a wide range of uh, of disease. Um, he wants to have a guess. What types of um, what types of disease do we think um, being active can help reduce? Anyone want to have any guesses on that? Heart, yeah, heart health makes sense, right? Um, a couple of people have said heart health, cancer, yeah, certainly. Um, not all cancers, but a number of cancers. So it won't, you know, won't make much difference to whether you get testicular cancer or not, for example. Um, but certainly has an impact on uh, like bowel cancer, which is one of the um, the biggest cancer killers. Anyone else? Yeah, bone health certainly. Um, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Some good answers there. Let's have a look. So the key ones that we actually know, uh, and dementia as well. Yes, someone got in there just in time. Well done, Sally. You got the, uh, the you got the uh, dementia one. So yeah, uh, being active has been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease, as we would expect, but also diabetes. Um, some cancers, particularly colon cancer, which is uh, uh, one of the main cancers that um, men, certainly younger men, are, are at risk of. And even some of those diseases of older age, like uh, Alzheimer's and uh, and stroke, though with stroke, it's uh, uh, for women um, more so than, than men. But interestingly, I and mean, again, this makes kind of sense at a kind of a sort of subjective level of feeling mentally better. Um, but being active can really improve your mental health. I, I, I haven't included this stat in the presentation. I, I only just um, came came across it a couple of days ago. But there's a great bit of um, national research being undertaken by the uh, by the Australian government, which asks the question: What do men do to keep uh, to manage their mental health? So, what are the kind of behaviours that men are most likely to to do on a weekly, monthly basis to keep their mental health on an on an even keel? And over half of men are, are doing something, some kind of self care for their mental health. And the most common thing that men do uh, to keep themselves mentally well is exercise. So, about forty percent of men say that's that's what I do to stay mentally well. But we also know scientifically that it uh, can make a major difference on mental health. In fact, some people say when they look at the data, if you look at interventions for depression, for example, uh, that uh, exercise has been shown to be as effective at treating depression as counseling and as medication. Now, that doesn't mean to say that it's better for all people. Uh, you know, for some people, the counseling will work. For some people, people, medication will work. For some people, a combination of the three. But in its own right, exercise is, a, is as effective at treating depression as counseling and, uh, and uh, medication. So thinking about you and your life, exactly how much should you be moving in order to actually get the benefit of of of, uh, of being active and fit uh and to actually feel uh, and, and and actually create a difference in your health and well-being so i don't know if you know um but about 40 percent of male workers uh actually sit all day sitting has become uh, a, a major health issue even if you're physically active, uh, you know, you do a lot of exercise at the weekend and the mornings or the evenings. If you sit all day, it can it can still negatively impact your health. Long periods of sitting. Of course, if you sit all day and all night, uh, which a small percentage of people seem to do, uh, whether that's you know being being behind screens on a couch, being bedridden. Um, but even if you're fairly fit and healthy, 
but still sit all day for long periods of time, it's not good for you. So it's worth considering um, what little nudges you can create in your day, like walking, like walking meetings or trying to take a break, go for a walk every five minutes. So I was going to break at lunchtime. I annoyingly have a, have a sports watch which uh, inbuilt within that sport watch is a little, I get a tap on my wrist every hour. If I haven't, um, if I haven't uh, stood up in the past 60 minutes, my watch slaps me on the wrist literally and, and says it's time to stand up. Um, I think that's a brilliant uh, intervention. Uh, my, my other half said, why on earth did you pay $500 to have a watch tell you to stand up? I could have done that for free, but for some reason, I'll listen to the watch, but I won't listen to my other half. Um, but that's my, hey, this is not a counselling session for me. I should go and resolve that with my partner. Um, now, quiz time, moving on. Um, who knows how many minutes a day you'd need to be? If you're fairly inactive, um, what would you start to, what, how much exercise would you have to start to do for it actually to increase your um, your life expectancy? So we've got some guesses here. Uh, quite a few people are saying 30 minutes, Anthony 30, Liam 15 to 30, Michael 15, Michael, another Michael 30, Jason 30, Mike says 60. Yeah, you'd think you need to really put in the uh, put in the hours, uh, Mike. John says 15, Colin says 15, Richard 30. Yeah, okay. So great bit of research, this. It, um, it looked at what impact increasing levels of exercise on a daily basis have on people's life expectancy. And it's actually been found across various studies that around 10 to 15 minutes of walking a day, just moderate walking, moderate pace walking is, uh, is, is enough to increase your life expectancy by three years. When people then increase that to about 25 to 30 minutes a day, they increase their life expectancy by seven years so this isn't about going down the gym running marathons uh doing sport but just the simple active of going from being pretty inactive to just walking for between 50 and 15 and 30 minutes a day can buy you an extra five years or so so between three years and seven years and mike says wow yeah wow it's that easy do i have a link to the research as anthony we'll certainly send it out to you Exclamation mark, says Colin. Yeah. So that's a really important message. Just even walking a little bit can add years to your life. Now, more generally, what does the government, and we all like to do what the government tells us, don't we? What does the government say uh, we should be doing in terms of exercise? Again, who wants to, who, who knows the answer to this already? Has this message got through? How many minutes? Are we expect are we expected to be uh, moving about according to our um our uh, leaders? Anyone want to guess? 75, 150, yeah. Hundred quite a few 150s. Yeah, yeah. The 150 is the most common answer. Yeah, loads of people. Michael, Pascal, Jason, Andrew, David, yes. Okay, okay, let's have a look. So 150 minutes would be about five lots of 30 minutes a day. Well. It's a bit complicated, but the basic recommendation is exactly that. Five minutes of 30 to 60 minutes of, uh, of moderate exercise. But if you if you ramp, ramp that up to intense exercise where you really get your heart going and you're out of breath and you're sweating, um, like a you know vigorous cycle, a vigorous, vigorous run, um, high intensity exercise ex exercises, um, you only need to be doing 15 minutes five times a week. So, so you can actually get away with... 75 minutes a week, five lots of 15 as, a, as to hit the basic requirements. And if you do that, you're doing more exercise than 70% of blokes. Or you can do a combination of the two, a couple of days of 30 to 60 minutes and two or three days of 15 minutes. But it's not just about moving and keeping your heart and lungs working particularly as we get older uh strength exercises are are, are really important 
There's an amazing bit of research done on, um, it was done on firefighters in the States where they tracked them over 10 years. And the basic measurement was how many, how many push-ups can you do? So it's a real sort of like blokey challenge. How many push-ups can you do, mate? Um, they found uh, that um, those who could do 10 uh, were, what they did, sorry, was they tracked how many of these men ended up getting heart disease within the next 10 years. Those who could do 10 push-ups were less likely uh, to uh, get heart disease than those who could do, couldn't do couldn't do 10. But the magic number was 40 push-ups. So at 40 push-ups, you've got the biggest difference in terms of uh, men getting heart disease or not getting heart disease. So there's an interesting challenge for you there. The, the, the important thing is, don't anyone go away today and suddenly start trying to do 40 push-ups when you haven't done any for years. But if you can build up the number of push-ups you do, you can massively increase your 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 um your well-being and your reduce your risk of heart disease. Who knows? Quick question. How many times a week should we be doing some kind of strength exercise? So that's not again, put your answer in the chat box. That's not um. You don't have to be going down to the gym and lifting loads of weights. Um, you could be like lifting and shifting things around the garden or, or lifting things for work, um, though obviously do it safely. Uh, I speak as someone who just um, just put his back out a couple of weeks ago lifting a cast iron fire pit up a steep driveway. Uh, so how many times a week? Who's got two, two times? Some are saying three times. Three times. Seven times, says David. Well, you can if you want, David. The observant of you, well done, thanks to the answers, the observant of you would have noticed that the answer was there in the previous slide. So strength exercises, the recommendation is a minimum of twice a week. Um, but that can be something like um, cycling, where you're strengthening your legs. It doesn't have to be going down the gym. So the final section, uh, now we've uh, all decided that we're going to uh, go for a walk for at least 15 minutes and and, and take on the uh, take on the push up challenge and see how we can increase our strength um what can we do for others i think so it's really important uh with with uh, with men in particular to think about how does how does us staying healthy positively impact those that matter to us our our, our kids our partner our family our our, our friends uh, and if we can actually engage others in something like exercise, it can become much more interesting and fun uh, than doing it on our own and can also have the added benefit of social connection. So you might want to reflect on ways that uh, you can engage others in being active, what you can do. And if you want to put some suggestions of things you already do with others to stay physically active in the uh, in the chat box, I'd love to hear them. Uh, I, for example, have uh, a couple of mates that I go cycling with regularly usually on a saturday morning go for a bike ride have a cup of coffee and a yarn it's one of my favorite times of of the week um if you any of you are doing uh, any kind of activity with others please uh please um please share your experiences in the chat box uh, but for the uh, benefit of this talk we've come up with um four examples of things you can do you can walk together uh, who hasn't heard of the man walks yet? There are over 100 man walks ar around Australia. Get yourself down to a man walk. There's probably one within a, within 10 or 20 kilometers of you. You can play sport together. You can train together. And you can even compete together. You know, get, get involved in a sports team. Those are just some of the examples of things you can do with, with your friends, with your kids, with your family, with your partner, uh, who's uh, shared some stuff. Uh, so I, Chloe says, I've recently started riding the bike as well. However keep getting rained on but i'm enjoying it colin says cycling um yeah ivan says he's had to take a phone call and he's gone so he's gone for a walk with his phone uh good on you ivan david plays squash uh someone else says they walk and have a, a coffee michael i go mountain biking for up to two hours two hours before breakfast three or four times a week but i was on my own I'm a country boy and I find isolation more refreshing. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being a lone wolf and having your, your alone time as well, Michael. Uh, awesome. All right. Uh, Mike says, play the drums. <laughs> good for me. Bad for the neighbours. Yeah, like it. Yeah, it's good strength training that and it gets the heart going. Yeah. Um, it also helps um, potentially improve the lung health of your neighbours as they shout, shut up, Mike! Um, 
Andrew says, we have a local men's fitness group. We generally have free sessions. That's brilliant. We generally have free sessions a week. Ivan says, we do ocean water swimming here in Hobart. Oh, you're brave. I do ocean water swimming in Queensland where the water is a bit warmer. Um, Ivan says, I do this daily and have just completed 170 days continuous doing at least two kilometers with a group. That's brilliant, mate. Um, I'm over to Perth tomorrow for a conference. It's a men's health conference, and they're starting the day at 7 a.m. with a dip on Scarborough Beach. Uh, and they are giving out pairs of budgie smugglers with the uh, the branding of the organization that's running it. So I'm getting a pair of new budgie smugglers together as tomorrow. I say new, it's actually probably my first pair of budgie smugglers. I'm becoming a proper rigid ditch Australian. Yeah, says Anthony, another drummer. Oh, yeah, a bit of solidarity there. Um, drumming is drumming is great for the brain as well. We should have put drumming in this. I think the next time we update this presentation, we'll include playing a musical instrument, as long as it's uh, something really big and heavy you have to carry. Um, Park Run. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that, Andrew. Um, Park Run is a fantastic um, initiative. Uh, like man walk uh, it's available free all over the country if you don't want know what it is go and check it out it's brilliant okay um i think that's pretty much as at the end of uh, the talk i'm out of breath just from presenting this i obviously need to uh, increase my fitness let's just review the 10 key facts that we have um looked at today so as i said right at the very beginning being physically inactive is a health issue it's killing up to 10 Aussie blokes a day, but let's celebrate the fact that exercise and uh, moving about staying fit is one of the areas of health where more men do it to stay healthy than women. But let us never forget the fact that not enough of us are um, being active enough to stay healthy. And it's a major health issue. Being unfit can be as bad for your health as smoking, but being Fit and active can keep not just your body, but your mind healthy and reduce your risk of major diseases. Some tips. If you sit less, you live longer. Even just a short 15 minute walk every day can extend your life by three years. Um, we didn't mention the statistic, but if you don't know it, try and hit those 10,000 steps a day. It's a really good measure of, uh, of whether you're being active enough, 10,000 steps a day. Uh, stay strong. Take on the push-up challenge. Tell me how you go on. Don't strain yourself. Remember, check with a GP before you do any new exercise. And think about, if you want to, how you can help your mates and family stay fit. Like I said, if you want to be the lone wolf out cycling for two hours on your own, nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful way to take care of your own well-being. But if you enjoy connecting with others and see the value in that, then, you know, think about getting out for a walk together, playing together, training together or competing together in some way with the people in your life that matter to you, um, your family and your mates. That's it. That's the end of our talk. Ten facts you need to know about exercise and men's health.